Okay, so the thing is, I forgot that I was supposed to preach this coming Sunday. Completely forgot. I got back from Milton Keynes thinking I could spend today relaxing, um, listening to worship music, that's what I like to do, learning new songs. But then realized, hey, I'm supposed to be speaking this Sunday at a Chinese church. Yay! <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do today for the Daily Bible Reading Show is I'm going to re read the passage I'm going to be preaching this coming Sunday. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 12 onwards. Let me pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, despite my forgetfulness, <laughs> please help me to learn from this passage. Help me to teach it clearly. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is... 2 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 12 onwards. And Paul says, For our boast is this, the testimony of our conscience, that we behaved in the world with simplicity and godly sincerity, not by earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and supremely so toward you. For we are not writing to you anything other than what you read and acknowledge, and I hope you will fully acknowledge, just as you did partially acknowledge us, that on the day of our Lord Jesus, you will boast of us as we will boast of you. Verse 15, because I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first so that you might have a second experience of grace. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? Do I make my plans according to the flesh ready to say yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you. Silvanus, and Timothy, and I was not yes and no, but in him it is, it is always, always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us and who has put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. But, verse 23, I call God to witness against me. It was to spare you that I refrained from coming again to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, for you stand firm in your faith. Okay, so that's the passage um, dealing with conscience, conscience, you know, people are questioning Paul's conscience. Like, hey, you know, you seem to be ch changing your plans. Are you sure you have a pure conscience? Because Paul has this travel plan. He says, I'm supposed to visit you, but apparently he didn't turn up. So they're kind of saying, you know, hey, if you, we can't trust you in terms of your travel plans. How can we trust you in terms of the gospel, you know, how sure are you that the gospel you preach is true? But I think more so, how can we trust you that you really love us, that you have your our best interests in your heart? So they're questioning his motivation, his conscience, whether he has this conflict going on inside of him that's resulting in this conflict in his travel plans. Um, you know, I read this and you know, I question my own conscience. You know, am I doing what I'm doing? You know, podcasts, you know, YouTube. You know, is is this is this pure? Is this is is, is this even, even worthwhile? Am I wasting my time? I was actually saying this to a friend just before this. You know, we were talking about this guy named Krish Kandaya, and Krish Kandaya on Twitter he says, you know, I can't sleep last night. <laughs> so here are the tr problems I'm trying to fix, and he's evacuating refugees. And that's what he's doing. He's trying to house a hundred people. He's trying to find long-term houses for families. He's refugees from Afghanistan. And you know, that's what he's dealing with. That's ministry for him. And you know, I'm, I'm doing this. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what you call helping people. Or I think of, you know, in my country, Malaysia, there's this person I admire so much, you know, Heidi Kwa. You know, one day, you know, she's in court 
facing charges for helping people. And another day, she's helping people, feeding 300 hungry families who are also refugees. And I think again, you know, that's ministry, that's serving people, that's helping people. You know, this seems so comfortable. What am I doing now? And am I wasting my time? You know, and already I find it so difficult. You know, maybe, maybe it's because my conscience, my motivation is impure. I don't have an answer to it, but I'm still struggling with that, by the way. Yeah. But let's look at Paul. Paul is not unclear. You know, he starts out by saying, I boast of this, the testimony of the conscience. But Paul is so sure that his conscience in making a plan and also changing that plan, it's always yes in Jesus Christ. Because, you know, he says, you know, we behaved in the world with simplicity. It's not hard to work out why he's doing what he's doing. He loves God and with godly sincerity, not with earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God. It's not as if I'm so smart to do this, but I'm constantly relying on God's grace. And then he says, supremely so towards you. He's not talking about you know, feeding how many hundred people or that movement out there. And he is, by the way, trying to raise up money to feed the hungry. You know, that's, that's what he's doing. But he's saying, even in the way that I'm dealing with you, he says they're supremely so towards you, especially so in the way in which you've seen how I've ministered to you, I've spoken the gospel to you, I've loved you. You know, how can you question this? You know, you should be able to tell yourselves from your own relationship with me, my motivation, my conscience, you know, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then, and then he, he talks about his travel plans in verse 15. I, I wanted to do this. I wanted to come to you first. Verse 16, I wanted to visit you, but obviously he didn't. And so he, and that, and so he explains why. He explains why in verse 23. He says it's to spare you, you know, because if I did come, it would be hard, not for me, but for you. you know, he, he would have you know, had to discipline them. It would have been very, very awkward. And then Paul thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna give him some time. And so I'm going to show some grace by not coming to you yet. But that's kind of like the earthly reason because Paul starts out not with this, that he only deals with that later on towards the end in verse 23, but he starts out by talking about how his plans are always yes in Christ. And so he, he, he talks about verse 17, was I vacillating, was I moving back and forth when I decided to come to you or not to come to you? He says, no, no, it says, you know, as surely, verse 18, our word to you has never been yes and no. And his word to you them is talking about the gospel and you know, the certainty of this truth, of this message of Jesus Christ dying for our sins. It's never been maybe this, maybe that. No, it's yes, of course, Jesus is Lord. Of course he died for us on the cross. And he talks about himself, and also verse 19, Silvanus and Timothy and I, he says, you know, it's never been yes and no, but it's always been yes because, verse 20, all of God's promises find their yes in him. There's kind of a certainty, not in myself, but in Christ, all in him, that as long as we're speaking the gospel, as long as we're doing it for Jesus, there's a kind of certainty that it is not just right and true, but it is worthwhile. It finds its yes and its amen in him. So yes means confirmation that it's true, but amen's, amen is us saying, yes, now I know it's true. Now I know for certain that God wants me to trust in this truth and to live out this truth. That's why he says, it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. I'm not sure whether in your church <laughs> you do this. Probably here not, you, you don't do this. Whereby the pastor says something that is true. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's so good. He died for us on the cross. And then something new goes out and says, Amen. <laughs> you, don't, you don't do that, right? I mean, and Chinese people don't do that. English people don't do that. But, you know, there's a part of us that inside of us when we hear the truth and the amazing goodness of God, we should go, Amen! Yes, that's true. And that's what Paul does in every aspect of his life. And that's the amazing thing. Even with his travel plans, but especially with his gospel plans, you know, we utter this Amen to God for His glory. Because it is God who establishes us, anointed us, put a seal on us, given His Spirit to us as that guarantee. And here it's saying that 
it is God giving us all these things, you know, this anointing, this assurance, this spirit to assure us that God knows what he's doing. And so, so, so later on and towards the end, he said, okay, yeah, the reason I came is to spare you. But the real thing that Paul wants them to trust in is not even Paul's conscience, but it's in God's assurance of the gospel. And Paul is saying, you can trust in me. My motivation to you is pure. I do love you. My motivation serving Christ, that's true as well. But really, what I want you to trust in, without a doubt, is that God knows what he's doing. That God has given all of us this, this spirit of his that tells us and confirms to us the truthfulness of his nature, the truthfulness of the gospel, and the certainty of Jesus as our Lord. And so if you have to trust in one thing, trust in that. Trust in that. Just want to... Uh, Look at the last verse, last verse, verse 24. He says, Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy. And so here it's talking about how, you know, some of us will still struggle with that motivation. And he says, you know, I could have two reproaches. I could lord it over your faith. I'm your pastor. I know the truth. I know better than you. Better listen to me. I'm not, we're not going to do that. We're not going to lord it over your faith. But we're going to come alongside you. I'm going to work alongside with you. Why? For your joy. We want you to love serving Jesus. We want you to love giving all your decisions and your motivations and all your plans over to Him such that, you know, in the end of it, you will just say, it's worth it. It's worth it. And, you know, for anyone who's being questioned in terms of your motivation, as Paul is, and you're tempted to kind of like, fight back, to, to retaliate, to defend yourself by saying, hey, you know, I know what I'm doing. You better listen to me. Paul, he doesn't, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He says, you know, we could, but we don't want to do that. We, we want to understand where you're coming from. And we want you to have that same kind of like joy in serving God that we have. And so we're going to come alongside you wherever you are and trying to work with you, build you up, encourage you, and to help you to see how to find this Amen, and this truthfulness and this certainty in Christ. Yeah, and so, yeah, so that's 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Um, now I just have to write out the sermon. <laughs> but just to say again, you know, I, I, I struggle in terms of my motivations and, you know, especially whether what I'm doing in terms of all these like podcasting and stuff. Is it just like this easy, easy thing to do? Is that why I'm doing it? Or is it really for Christ? Am I willing to change my plans so that you will serve him better and love people better? Is that what I'm willing to do as Paul is? Or, you know, do I have to do some hard searching of my heart and a hard kind of evaluation of my own motivations and to just look to Christ again and to find there that amen and that yes in him? I, I struggle with that as well. Heavenly Father, thank you for that assurance here in the gospel that we can only find it in you, only in Christ this certainty, this yes, this is amen. So please, by your spirit, would you <laughs> give that certainty to us so that you will look outside of ourselves to him and to him alone. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sorry, long one today. Take care and God bless. Bye. Shh.